Hey there, you like coming at you again from OSA Carpentry here today with another episode of What is a Coral? Today I wanted to talk a little bit about a stony coral that is a type of solitary coral. This is a coral that generally never ends up growing more than a single polyp at a time. And this would be the grouping of plate corals. The group of plate corals does overlap a handful of different genuses, one of the most common being fungia. This is probably the most popular type of plate coral, but it also includes Cycloceris, Heliofungia, Diaceris, and a couple other genuses of corals as well. As I just mentioned, generally these plate corals are going to be single solitary polyps. So unlike a lot of the other corals that you might be familiar with in your aquarium, these corals tend to only grow as one polyp. So this one polyp will generally continue to grow in size as long as you're able to keep it alive. However, a lot of times they are going to reach about a max size with most of these hitting about three, four, maybe five inches in diameter. And oftentimes you're not gonna get much more size out of them. However, on occasion, you might run into a couple examples of plate corals that get a little bit larger. Beside me here, I have both fungia and heliofungia genus of plate corals. Again, I mentioned that fungia is probably the most common genus of plate corals. Care for a lot of these corals is gonna be very similar. These are stony corals, so making sure that your alkalinity, calcium, magnesium are always in check is going to be important to keeping them. However, they are not terribly demanding in some of your other regards. Oftentimes they are most appropriate to put right on the sand bed or at least somewhere down bottom in the aquarium. And they don't often have to be glued to things. However, some people do prefer to glue that stony base onto a stone or a rock just to keep them off of the bottom of the aquarium and to keep them from moving or flipping if you have a lot of flow in the tank. One thing worth note with these is if you don't glue them down throughout the day, they are going to change in shape a little bit as their tissues swell up with water. They will become a little bit more puffy throughout the day. And sometimes this ability to change in shape will allow them to catch a little bit of flow and move around the tank. So if you notice this in your aquarium, keeping them in a spot that's got lower flow or perhaps anchoring them like I just mentioned will help to make sure that this coral does not damage itself or does not sting any of its neighboring corals if it is to bump into them. Generally, the easiest of the plate corals is going to be that genus Fungia. Cycloceris are going to also be quite easy. These two can be kind of hard to tell apart from each other. The biggest difference is that Cycloceris from the side profile is a little more dome shaped, whereas the Fungia skeleton is a lot more flat. However, these are going to be very similar in terms of care. Most of your plate corals do appreciate feeding on occasion, feeding even larger meaty foods such as krill and mysis shrimp and everything down to smaller particles like Fritz Coral Max are going to be good offerings, maybe on a weekly or bi-weekly basis with certain colors being a little bit better at not requiring those feedings. On the note of colors, they come in just about every color under the sun. Some of the most commons are going to be just a solid green color, but you get some really interesting oranges and yellows and purples. They are definitely very diverse in their color forms and the rarer color morphs definitely go for a bit more money in the aquarium trade. Plate corals tend not to be farmable. A lot of times plate corals are coming from the wild environment. Due to that solitary nature, generally they are not going to split. So oftentimes that one polyp could be years old and oftentimes is the result of a sexual spawning event in the wild where a small coral larvae was to settle and become its own individual polyp. That is not to say that farming these corals is impossible. There is some success with cutting fungias. However, they generally do not tend to grow back into this round shape too quickly. Healing is about a 50-50 chance. Sometimes you end up killing both halves of the coral and then their shape is usually not very appealing right off the bat. So for the most part, people do not cut fungia corals in order to propagate them. One thing that is quite interesting about a lot of your plate corals, and this counts for a few of the different genuses, if you do happen to have tissue loss on a plate coral and you keep the skeleton intact, keep it in the water, place it somewhere that's getting moderate amount of flow and a lower amount of light. Any flesh that is to stay on that skeleton can become a new polyp. So every once in a while you do run across farmed or aquacultured plate corals. Generally that is the result of someone almost losing an entire polyp or an entire plate coral and just holding on to that skeleton, leaving it in the aquarium. And sometimes you can get a piece of skeleton that has healthy enough flesh on a few different portions 
that you are able to get fully formed baby plate corals just by leaving it in the aquarium. So this is a really neat way, something you might run into at frag swaps, might see available online, are these aquacultured plate corals that they're just the product of that fact of these guys' natures. And that's one of my favorite things about this coral. So if you ever do have a plate coral that seems like it has seen better days, it's losing flesh, it looks like it's showing mostly skeleton, leave it in your tank, maybe throw it somewhere in the back that it's gonna get a little bit more dim light a little less flow and see if you end up getting any flesh back on that skeleton. So I already mentioned the difference between Fungia and Cycloceris, with those two being probably the most similar of the plate coral types. On occasion, we also run across what they call slipper or tongue corals, which are like a type of plate coral that grow outward, more um, oblong or oval shaped as they grow. These are a little less common in the hobby. You go for a little bit more money sometimes. This behind me here is what they call a Heliofungia or a long tentacled plate coral. This is gonna share very similar characteristics to the other plates. However, as that name suggests, it has very long polyps. These tend to have a very potent sting that I've heard even certain people are kind of sensitive to. So worth being aware of if you do plan on picking one of these up is they might leave you a rash just like a jellyfish might. These tend to be a little bit more finicky than some of the other plate corals, but generally something that a experienced aquarist would have decent success with. And personally, my favorite genus of the plate corals, I don't have any examples to show off today, I would be the Diaceris genus of plate corals. These are very unique because they don't necessarily always grow in that very nice round appearance that you see with the other plates. Oftentimes they're gonna have a little more of a random appearance as they continue to grow. They are also a stony coral. They will grow more than one mouth if they are given the chance to. So unlike your Fungia or Cycloceris, which almost always just have a single mouth in the middle of their structure, the Diaceris plate corals will grow a handful of mouths and they'll get more of a jagged ruffled appearance around the edges. And as they do start to grow, as they do form more mouths and as they do form more ridges, these corals are known to frag themselves in the wild or in the aquarium setting. So as they become larger, they will develop small fractures in their skeleton. And if given the chance to, will actually break its own skeleton into a few pieces and propagate itself in that manner. So for the sake of aquacultured plate corals, Diaceris is quite a decent variety to keep long-term in aquariums to be able to farm. However, it is not going to be a terribly fast growing coral and it tends to be a little bit more finicky than some of your other corals, especially your other plate corals. Some varieties that have been in the aquarium hobby for a while are a little bit more bulletproof. However, this coral is definitely not the most easy coral to keep, but for the sake of aquaculture and the sake of farming plate corals, this is probably the best candidate to keep long-term in an aquarium. I hope you all learned a little bit about plate corals today, and I hope that I was able to touch upon a lot of their care and differences between those genuses we run across quite frequently. Plate corals tend to be a really interesting polyp to add to your aquarium, uh, and really cool seeing as they are those solitary polyps, something that you could collect. A lot of people will line up their sand bed with a handful of different type of plate corals, just so you get those different colors. But they are a very cool, rewarding coral to keep in your aquarium and something that is quite unique in comparison to a lot of your other stony corals. As always, thank you all for watching. Feel free to leave questions, comments, suggestions in the comment section below. Keep on reefing.